Hi, this is Carl with another Relax, Focus, Succeed video. A while back, I did a video about how you can use your body to be present and to always use it as a central place where you know that that's your anchor, right? Your breath is always in real time. Your heartbeat is in real time and so forth. And I'll put a link to that at the end of this video. But for many people, myself included, it can be difficult to focus on the body as your anchor because of pain. So I love Shinsen Young, and one of my favorite kinds of meditation is to meditate about the pain in the body, which I can't get rid of. It's not that I like the pain, but I love the meditation where you focus on the limits of the pain and you know, you, you work on that. But pain, especially chronic pain, can be debilitating. And over time, it can be something where you say, look, I just, I want to think about something else. I don't want pain to be the center of my physical experience. I don't want pain to be something that is so common and so present that I can never escape it. And so sometimes it's useful to have something outside your body that can help you be in the present moment. Now, why do we care about the present moment? Well, as I mentioned in the other video, your brain wants to be in the past. Your brain wants to be in the future. Your brain wants to go off to la la land. It wants to create scenarios. It wants to do its job which is constantly thinking, constantly analyzing, constantly doing something. So to quiet that brain down a little bit, being in the present moment allows you to focus completely on the here and now. And if you're thinking about your breath, for example, that's real time. There's nothing more real time <laughs> than your breath or your pulse at this moment. But, if you want to find something outside your body to focus on, you know, many of us spend our time inside of a room and there's four walls and you can spend some time looking around the room, but that might get pretty old pretty fast. I have two favorite meditations that I do. One of them is on the beach to be able to sit on a beach. And sometimes people have asked me like, how can you do this? This sounds like the single most boring thing in my life. And I've, I've had people actually say that. But here's the deal for me. If you, if you sit on a beach and you count the waves, for example, two things are going to happen. One is you'll just have this constant sound coming into your head. Your focus will be very clearly there. You'll hear different kinds of waves. You know, there's sometimes a wave will be consistent, 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 and then you'll hear a splashing. And it's not an animal, it's not a person, it's just a slightly different power in the waves. The other thing that will happen is that you will lose count. It's not like you're gonna count a million waves. You're gonna count for a while and then your brain's going to do its thing and you're going to, oh, wait, oh, did I pay that bill? Is the roof leaking? You know, whatever. Your brain is going to hiccup a bit and then you're going to say, wait, 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 I'm here to count waves. Where was I? Was I 104, 110? Uh, uh, and you start over. One, two, three. The beauty of something like counting waves is that it allows you to be completely in the moment, to have a focus other than yourself, to just let your body be, to exist for a minute or two, for 20 minutes, for whatever period of time you decide. And you can do it with your eyes open or your eyes closed. Many people prefer to meditate with their eyes closed for a long time, for years before they realize, I can get just as much or even more 
of the present moment by having my eyes open. Yes, it will be more distraction, and that's why it's good to wait a while. Many people don't start meditating with their eyes open because there's too much distraction. They're constantly looking around. And so you have to get used to the fact that over time, I want to focus on the moment, but I'm okay to acknowledge, oh, there's a seagull going by. There's a person walking between me and the waves. There's, you know, there might be a fish jumping <laughs> in the waves. So for me, I like, I like waves. I like beaches. Doesn't matter really whether it is a lake or an ocean. All good for me. The good news is I get to spend time on the beach. Another of my favorite ways to meditate, because I don't live on a beach, is to meditate on the rising sun and on the birds and sometimes other animals, but mostly birds that come to life as the sun rises. Now, I am lucky in that behind my house, there's a, a hedgerow and great vines that grow there. And there's, you know, lots of lots of brushes and so forth. And inside the bushes, there are birds who go to sleep. And so in the morning, as the sun begins to lighten the sky, I see a bird pop up and first they kind of look around and then they might, you know, signal to one another. They don't really start singing right away, but they sort of signal, you know, all clear, no wolves here. <laughs> right? And then more and more of them pop up and then they begin to uh, talk to each other and chatter. And so all of that activity starts very small and grows over time. So that's the kind of thing where you're completely consumed in the moment. There's a, a little bit of, you know, a, not, I wouldn't call it drama, but a little play going on as the, the birds come awake and begin their day and so forth. And every once in a while, there will be a squirrel scurrying by on the fence or on the power lines or whatever. But for the most part, it's a very good opportunity to be in the moment and sort of have some curiousness about what will happen next and not think about the body and not think about yourself and not worry about the bills or the roof or the kids or anything else. So when you think about opportunities to meditate, consider the things in your life, whether it is the opportunity to get to a beach or the opportunity to see something in your own backyard, where can you find something that is an interesting piece that keeps you focused on the present moment without focusing on your body. So again, I have chronic pain and have had it for more than 20 years. And sometimes I need to meditate on the pain in order to live with the pain or in order to reduce the pain. And it's sometimes simply to once again, accept the pain. I can do lots of things for treatments, but at the end of the day, the pain is a part of my life. It's part of your life. And you may have other kinds of pain, whether that's emotional pain or spiritual pain. There's all kinds of pain. It doesn't have to be physical. So focusing on something outside of your body, outside of your brain, outside of yourself, is a great way to meditate and to create your own sort of experience around that, that you don't have to share with anybody. You don't have to write about it. You don't have to sing a song about it, right? You can just sit in a chair for 10 or 15 minutes. If you live in a place where the weather is decent, then at least on the days when the weather is good, hang out outside, listen to nature, listen to the activity going on in your own backyard. Maybe, like me, watch the sunrise and pay attention to the birds. But I encourage you to find something that you can look at and say, that is my constant element outside my body that I know is always available to me. Because yes, your body is always available to you, but it may be that just for a change of pace, 
it would be nice to focus on something else for a little while. I'd appreciate any comments you have or suggestions. How do you meditate when you focus outside of your body? For Relax, Focus, Succeed, this is Carl Palachuk wishing you the best of luck in everything you do.